This is the StoryWorks Roundtable, where we have conversations about craft. Because becoming a successful author begins with writing a great story. Hello and welcome to this week's StoryWorks Roundtable. <laughs> we are talking about motivation. And if you're watching the video, you might have seen Robert doing some kind of a chair dance here. I think <laughs> I think it might have involved imaginary pom-poms to motivate us. <laughs> and if you are like us, you might be feeling some overwhelm from the holidays, or at least like some of us. <laughs> and uh, the hustle and bustle and socialization. So this is an apt topic. How do we stay motivated when life takes over <laughs> our days and we have 50 extra things to do that we don't normally have to do and we're gearing up for a new year and maybe setting new goals and whew, it's a lot. So uh, what motivates you? Let's just start there with the general question. What motivates you to write and be a writer? <laughs> Fear of pain. What what is what is going to cause you pain if you don't write? <laughs> That's I an shall not earn answer. any money. My wife will berate ah. me for not having written any books. Um, by the time I get to next year, I'll be almost in the grave. Um, I'll lose my houses. My daughter will hate me. Uh, my friends will desert me. Um, yeah, so it's quite small, really. Just a yeah, 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 minor. <laughs> Trivial, no, but, trivial things. But I mean, you know, in, in your head, you can t catastrophize eventually for those sort of things. But often it's it's just a, it's a simple beat up of, oh, God, I still haven't written anything today. And so for me, it's definitely more of a I, I tend not to move towards goals. I tend to move away from from pain more than more than okay. that. Mm. Uh, huh. so, but I come, I'll come back to revisit that in a tick anyway. OK, good. You're yeah. around that we definitely need to revisit that <laughs> well yeah that's interesting that's like negative motivation yeah that's the right. stick what motivates just... you Catherine? the stick or the uh, carrot i don't know it really depends i'm really bad at, at giving myself carrots that i don't just go ahead and take um without a <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i know all about that one. Oh, yeah i can have a chocolate bar if i start writing oh wait I can just have the chocolate bar. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm an my adult. Butt. I can just have the chocolate But, you know, uh -huh. it's, so that's been a little bit tricky for me is finding that those ways to motivate myself. And um, I've been finding better ways in other areas of my life than writing lately. So I'm trying to kind of apply it to my writing. But that's been kind of my experience lately is just trying to figure out that balance mm -hmm. <laughs> and what is the motivation factor. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm motivated by story craft and telling stories and getting what's in my head out on the page and doing something with it. Cause when I'm not writing, I get blue. I actually, if I don't have a creative project in the works, if I'm between projects and I'm just busy or if I'm really, you know, life has taken over <laughs> as it does in December for many people, um, it, it bums me out. I just find that it, after so many weeks of that, I feel sad. Like I'm not, I'm not myself. Like mm -hmm. I'm not doing what I should be doing. Mm. So right. I resonate with that. It's like being true to yourself and who you want yeah. or see yourself to be is mm. that's mm. really like your actions do define who you are. And sometimes mm -hmm. when you're not reflecting the actions that you want to reflect, that is a good motivational factor. Yeah. Yeah. And when I do have a project going, I have no problem working on it. When I'm in between projects, there can be trouble getting started again and getting the wheel mm -hmm. turning. And then when I feel like I can't write because something else with life is taking over, that's the hardest. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I get very self-critical if I'm not writing but it's all on me. I should be writing. I should be making the time. I should be getting my butt in the chair. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a lot of that kind of self-flagellation going on. Get, right. thee, and get thee to your desk, writer. <laughs> right. And there's that negative motivation thing that Robert was talking about earlier. It is kind of a fear-based thing. If you look at it that way, like you're afraid yes. that you're not going to continue to be a writer mm -hmm. if you don't sit down and become a writer in the next 15 minutes or whatever. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that one of the 
the issues with that is I've just I've been reading a book by, um, called Finish by John Acuff, um, and it's about the perfectionism that we descend into when um, you set some kind of idea in your head about something you're going to do um, and you could be half an hour late starting it and for some people and I'm, I would fall into this category I'm already behind um, mm-hmm. so so in the, I start to write it off in my head okay well I'll start tomorrow instead it's yeah. like people on a people on a diet who have a bad breakfast and go oh, okay well this day's written off well it's not but in their head mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it started badly um, and I think the shoulda thing can can creep up on you like that where after six to seven days of shoulda you go ah oh, all right i'm just gonna have to refocus myself and you know mm-hmm. do something to fix my life and turn around and maybe i'm not even maybe i need a holiday or maybe i just need to go and buy myself something or maybe you know <laughs> it's, whereas actually what you need the most is just simply to start uh, right right and, and and as he says you know just start badly just revise down your goals and and mm-hmm. just, okay well i'm just gonna do five minutes i'm gonna write 10 words Right, that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to write ten words, and then I can tick it off for today. And all of a sudden, it changes a switch in your mind, and and the motivation can start to come back. And right, so so I think that sort of, for me anyway, the, the negative motivation works to a degree, and mm-hmm. then after a while, it becomes so uh, unappealing because I feel like I'm so far behind that I just don't do anything. <laughs> yes, right, yeah, yeah. No, that that's so easy to fall into that trap. It is, and it's like pushing. Like getting started is like pushing the boulder up a hill. And then once you get to the top and you actually make the start, you gain momentum and the boulder goes downhill. So once you're doing it, it becomes so much easier to keep doing it. But Mm -hmm. it's that not doing it time when motivation wanes and things get hard and you just want your chocolate bar. (laughs) Right. Or your Netflix binge or your, you know. Oh, yeah, because. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that TV show is so much more important than writing a novel. <laughs> right. And at the end of the night, you're going to say, well, what did I get out of that TV show? I should have just written my novel, but mm-hmm. it feels better at the Char- time. <laughs> character mm-hmm. research. Right, character exactly. research. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I was researching. <laughs> I think also we – um we get the wrong end of the stick with motivation. So even the word itself is is a, a you know a nominalization. It's it sounds like a noun. It's a thing that you should have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, but in reality, we have to ask ourselves how are we motivating ourselves, um, or not motivating ourselves as a, as a, or you know how am I depressing myself, for example? Right. Uh, and I really like the work of a a guy called Tony Schwartz uh, who wrote, I think, The Power of Full Engagement. Um, and I can't remember what his latest thing, but he, he runs the Energy Project. Um, and his big study is based on the idea, which is I don't think it's his idea, but he's developed it, that we only really have a limited amount of conscious willpower every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and it gets used up very quickly. And as writers, we really do depend on that to get the butt in the chair. Right. Uh, and so his big thing is, don't use willpower, use rituals and routines mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Set up, which I think is why so many successful writers have, have said, well, I just have this time of the day and I sit down and even if I really, really want to go and watch TV, I know that I just have to go and do this. Mm-hmm. And so there's not they even question, they can be demotivated, but because it's the routine and the ritual, it forces if eventually a switch, I suppose, like John Acuff was saying, is that, you know, once you start with 10 words, 15 words, like you were saying, a leader with the boulder up the hill, mm-hmm. yeah. eventually something clicks. And it, I know that's true for me. If I start writing when I don't feel like it, and all of a sudden I'll, I'll usually work to the, um, uh, what's the name of that thing? The Pomodoro. Yeah, I normally oh, right. do Pomodoro. Mm-hmm. So I'll do 25 minutes. And before I know it, I've gone 45 minutes and the alarm's going off. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. No, I don't want to stop now. I don't want to stop. Ah, but you didn't want to start before, did you? Right, mm-hmm. exactly. Yes. So, yeah, so rituals and routines I think are important. You know, having carving yourself a space and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, if you have other people around, um making requests or deals with them that you're uninterrupted for a certain period of time, even if it is only 20 minutes. Right. None of those things give internal motivation, but they provide permission, I think, for um, or, or even if they, they act as, as levers to mm-hmm. get you started. 
Yeah, I agree. I think that's super important. I've managed to do that with the daily meditation practice. I've gone 400, over 400 days now of daily meditation. And you mm -hmm. think, okay, now I just need to apply that to my writing. Right. And make writing time the most important thing in my day so that it becomes inviolable. And I have tried time and again over my life to set that time frame, stick to it, never let anyone else, <laughs> you know, the partner, the kid, the dog, the whatever, interrupt that. And for some reason, it hasn't stuck yet as an inviolable thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've tried getting up at 5am. I've tried doing it in the afternoon. I've tried. So I'm not sure what, uh, what, what my deal is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah or yeah. what my funny ritual stuff. should be. It is funny. Yeah. It's very... That you could do it for something like meditation, but yet something mm -hmm. that's so, so important to you as a person because you feel yeah. you get depressed if you don't do it. Right. It's bizarre that we can procrastinate about things that we, you know, we feel are key to, to our own lives. Right. And I think part of that might be the time frame. Like I can sit and meditate for 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, I can I can spend 10 minutes. But when it comes to writing, I want to sit for two hours or four hours. I never just want to write right. for 10 minutes. So then there's that well, but I have to do x, y and z today. So what can I give up? The thing that only affects me that nobody else is depending on me for. Right, you know, and this is I think is where John Acuff saying, "Well, revise it down. Just go do ten minutes, yeah, and and be done with it, and 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 treat and treat yourself as if you've succeeded that day, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe the next day will be fifteen minutes or, or whatever. But um, but the, as he says, most people just write the whole thing off quick because I didn't do two hours. I'll do no hours. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's right. quite bizarre. It is bizarre, yeah." And I don't want people to think I'm not writing. I know. Because <laughs> I write, you know, I write. I've got books out. But yeah, I definitely have these phases like the between project phases or the life has gone crazy phases where I struggle with the motivation and the routine and finding that ritual or that space in my life for it. Right. Which is funny because it is something that we love so much. Yeah. You know, we, we enjoy it. You know, when you're, you get done with a writing session, you probably feel like you've conquered the world or, you know, like, or at least you're inspired for the next day or, you know, something is going on in your mind. Like you feel like you've done something that's important and that you, you know, enjoyed. And yet the getting there is the hard part, which is funny to me mm -hmm. that, you know, even though like, and I'll, I'll do this all the time where I'll like, get through a writing session and be like, I loved that. That was perfect. You know, right. that was yes. exactly yeah, what yeah, I needed yeah. right then yeah. and there. And tomorrow I'm going to have yeah. the exact same problem <laughs> sitting uh -huh. down to do it, even <laughs> though it's something that fills me up so much. Um, so it's just kind of funny how our brains work like that. So I think reminding myself, this is a blessing. You enjoy it. You love it. Mm -hmm. You're going to love the feeling. Of, kind of like when you exercise and you feel so great at the end of your exercise. Right. It doesn't matter. The next day you're still not going to want to go to the gym. You know, and kind of remembering the feeling uh -huh. from the day before because we've turned it into this kind of work play. Like it's play, but it's work. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we kind of like psych ourselves out sometimes to try yes. and, you know, it's just kind of an interesting dichotomy that we've done with writing. Yeah, yeah so re reconnect is. yourself to the the feelings as opposed to the, the task. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, say that again. Uh, reconnect. <laughs> Reconnect yourself to the feeling as opposed to the task. Yeah, that's a takeaway. Everybody write that down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, post it on your that's, computer. Yeah, <laughs> that is going on my wall. Why do I do this? It's not because I have to. It's because I love it and I feel good after I do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this Absolutely. is what we used to do. Well, I used to do it with, with yoga because mm -hmm. being a, um, a devotee of hot yoga, it's been a love-hate relationship for me. So it's a bit like you with mm -hmm. the meditation. You know, I, I, well, I'm not saying you hated meditation, no. but, you know, <laughs> get, getting into it. And yes. So, oh, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And then I, I just, I hate, the 90 minutes is pure hate for me. I just can't wait for it to be over because it's just so hard. It's really hard. 
Uh, but the feeling after is so good, and mm -hmm. and so I would have to talk myself into it. Um, so it sounds like the caffeine that's a similar sort of thing as well. Is and I've had to do that with yoga. So I guess it's no different really with writing. If you're having one of those days where you just think, oh, yeah, God, even write. Even a thousand words is going to be a drudge today. Well, it's right. the feeling, as you say, eventually it, it comes, and mm -hmm. that's why we do it. Mm -hmm. This is because we're telling stories. Yes. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned yoga because I have the same thing with yoga. And I, many times when my practice stalls, I say, okay, I'm doing a 30 day challenge. I have to do at least three sun salutations. That's all I have to do. I can do that in yes. 10 minutes or less. But the idea is once I'm on the mat, I do those three, my body warms up a little bit, I feel good, I keep going. Yep. So maybe what we all need is a 30-day challenge to write. <laughs> right. I'm going to spend 15 minutes writing, I can quit after 15, you know? Yeah, exactly. But leave exactly. yourself open to continuing past right. that timer. Well, and maybe we need something like when we were talking about writing exercises and how your friend uses like a 15-minute writing exercise like mm -hmm. every day. Like even just saying, I'm just going to do a writing exercise today and you give yourself a 15-minute window and a writing exercise or right. a prompt, you know, then you never know that, you know, you know you actually have an hour and a half sitting there in front of you. But uh -huh. you're just going to do the writing exercise. You might, you know, similar kind of ideas to do three sun salutations. Yes. I'm just going to do this. Oops, it's been an hour and a half and I wrote 1,500 words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> exactly. I, and there are some, I mean, the, the, everybody, I guess, motivation or how we're motivating ourselves comes in different ways for different people. And I mean, I know when we've spoken to, to Brian Cohen and Chris Fox, they're both, mm -hmm. you know, extreme proponents of very public deadlines. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I really hate that working with deadlines. Cause Me I, too. Yeah, because I... <laughs> I've had them forever, and I'm, I'm just pleased not to have them. But they mm -hmm. they can work, that's for sure. I had a short story to deliver recently, and that definitely got me going. Um, <laughs> and then also mentioning Chris Fox again, um, he has um, I think it's five thousand words per hour book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, don't be daunted by the 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 size of the my oh God, five thousand words in an hour. Um, but what he says is start in small chunks. Mm -hmm. So for people who for whom actually carving the time feels difficult, that's a great book, as is um, uh, Monica Leonel's, I think it might be called Writing Fast, or I don't actually, sorry, Monica, I don't remember what it's called, but it's about mm -hmm. starting in eight-minute sprints. So she mm. says just eight minutes, it's all you need to do. Um, so I think for those who are new writers who are mm -hmm. sort of trying to anywhere with it and feel that, that they see these other writers sitting down for four hours and churning out thousands and thousands of words. Don't compare yourself. Don't use that as motivation right. and it's putting you <laughs> off. Use the motivation of, you know, in eight minutes, what can I write? Is there some joy in that for me? Great. Now yeah. just start getting that into the ritual. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. And it's really amazing what you can write in 15 minutes or eight oh, yeah. minutes, you know, but yeah. I use 15 minutes for, um, exercises when I teach live workshops and people have no idea what they're going to be asked to write before I tell them. You say, okay, go. You stop them after 15 minutes and they often have like two pages. You know, that's like 500 words in 15 minutes longhand with no previous clue what the topic would be or <laughs> right, exactly. where their mind would go. And it's always impressive how much we can accomplish in that short of a time if we just go. <laughs> and, you know, and think of, uh, I was recently read, as, a, as I said before, the um, Ray Bradbury's Zen in the Art of Writing. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's just I always new. I mean, Fahrenheit 451 is a short book anyway, um, but it's a much revered book. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always knew that it was written in a short period of time. But when you read his memoir or it's one of his essays you realize that the first draft which was half the size it was only twenty five thousand words mm -hmm. he wrote in nine days um and, and then the uh, the editor came back and said yeah we like it but it needs to be bigger it needs to be longer so he went back and finished the rest of it in about another three weeks mm -hmm. um you know and so it's not as if you know, you need to necessarily labor over a long period of time with hours every day but he had a, a writing method where he um, all of a sudden he had young kids and he used to write in the garage and the the kids would come and tap on the window and say, you know, daddy, 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 and he just couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So he went to, and this is in the days obviously before 
laptops and right. <laughs> iPads and such and dictation tools. Um, and so he was handwriting, well, handwriting, he was typing on a, on a manual typewriter, um, possibly electric in those days. So he had to go to the library. And in the basement of the library, you could rent typewriters by mm-hmm. the half hour. So he went and wrote it by the half hour with a dime every half hour, apparently. So, yeah. so there's motivation. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get a few more words in before this runs out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that story before about the basement library and the yeah. the bag of dimes he would take. <laughs> yeah, it's very cute, isn't it? <laughs> type away. So we all need it a is. little like coin thing right next to our computer with a timer, and you have to feed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's it. There you go. Your computer. <laughs> yes. Huh. Okay, so maybe well, that that's, would well, that's Pomodoro, isn't it? Really you know, motivate it's, it's... you. You put your uh, your. Hang on, I've got I've got a Buddha. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Piggy bank. <laughs> money oh, the hole is right there. I've got a, <laughs> there a go. piggy bank on my desk. <laughs> um, so every time I accomplish a word count or a time amount, I could put money in there, there and then go. at the end of the book, I could go treat myself to whatever that money whatever. will buy me. That's kind of exciting. I kind of there like that go. idea. Yeah, me too. Just so, don't use pennies. That you'll be a bit disappointed by the end of your book. Yes, I could buy myself <laughs> that chocolate bar. Four dollars. <laughs> um, so it sounds like we're motivated by productivity, by getting words on the page and actually spending time doing something we love. And we have talked about lots of tips and tricks to help us accomplish that productivity, like the Pomodoro technique, uh, writing sprints, upping your word count, um, what else, using money or treats. (laughs) Rituals and routines. Rituals, yeah, rituals, setting a ritual. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we've missed here that can help people stay motivated and get the butt in the chair? Uh, a sizable store of chocolate bars, I think. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. A cupboard full yeah. of chocolate Your bars. Favorite caffeinated yeah. beverage or you know, whatever <laughs> works for you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Natalie Goldberg says in Writing Down the Bones, she was um, living in Arizona and there was a coffee shop she liked a mile or two from her house. So she would do her writing. And then if she wrote and did her writing, she got to walk to the coffee shop. So she got her exercise and buy one of their chocolate chip cookies. So she was combining (laughs) her writing motivation with her exercise with the, uh, the reward of chocolate. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I do. I do. If, if them really works for me, I'm definitely a big if then if I can, if I can do 25 minutes here, then I can go and do something that maybe I, you know, it feels like an ease to me because sometimes writing feels hard. Um, you know, it's, it is hard. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. anyone who can write even a 50,000 word novel has, has done more than most of the world can do. Right. Yes. Excellent. So also take breaks and treat yourself to something that feels easy. There you go. Yeah. And also, since we've talked about eating lots of sugar and sitting on chairs, you probably should maintain your body as well. And yoga. Yoga. And And walking to the cookie. Yes, walk to your cookie and not to the cupboard. That's right. Yeah, yes, definitely. (laughs) All right. Well, with lots of well wishes for your motivation, your uh system of rewards including lots of chocolate and sugar and your health and exercise that is it for this week's storyworks roundtable find show notes and more at storyworkspodcast.com thank you for listening to the storyworks roundtable find all our shows show notes and videos at storyworkspodcast.com